episode number three of the uh, Playing to Win series, joined today by Dustin Wolf. How you doing, my man? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks, Rich. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we got a really cool story that I want to dive into for um, you on this broadcast. Um, again, guys, the aim of the show is to showcase excellence. Um, I see two distinct areas that men play in in their lives, and one is playing to win, and the other is playing not to lose. And those are two very different things. And the story that I'm going to share uh, that Dustin has really, and I'm not going to spend too much time kind of glossing over it because he got some pretty interesting highlights to, to his life and how he created this business. Um, but he's essentially in the medical field in California, uh, runs a clinic that treats all kinds of age related issues um, mm -hmm. for people. And he basically distilled a, a three to $7,000 technology that required you to visit a clinic to about a $400 at home unit. Um, so we're going to kind of lead up to all that in a second. But what I want to do before we do each one of these episodes, I always like to share an example of what playing to win looks like. And everybody knows I'm a car guy that's followed me for mm -hmm. a while. Uh, so one of my viewers sent this in over to me. So I just want you to watch this because this is really what playing to win looks like from the car world. Check this out. So this is at Laguna Seca. Just going to reduce the volume a bit. So this is at Laguna Seca. And if you're familiar with it, you've probably played it in car video games. There's a corkscrew at the top of a hill. Watch this. This is the last lap of the race. Right? And he shuts the door on the first place run up. The, the guy in the red car was in second place. And look at the gap that he put between the two of them there. That's what playing the win looks like. And that requires taking a certain degree of risk in life, uh, putting in the work. And uh, sometimes, not always, but sometimes it pays off. So there you sometimes. have it pretty slick example. So Dustin, you're, um, you're an ex-military guy. Um, kind of take me back to the early stages because you served in the military, it was Air Force stuff. Uh, you got married real young, had kids real young, kind of lived on ramen noodles for a while. <laughs> How did you get started before you got into this medical business? Talk about that. Well, you know, I, I love the concept of this show and you, you're, you're right. There's, there's two types of guys, right? Playing to win, playing, you know, and, and playing to not lose. And I've always subscribe to that mentality of playing to win and it is uh definitely a lot more risk adverse but i will tell you you know yes i served in the military uh i did uh four years which for a very young guy um was something that was extremely valuable to me you know at 18 i went into the air force thought i knew everything and within three months i knew i found out i knew nothing right so uh, it really instilled a uh, a a very hard uh, working work ethic in me, right? So what did having you do to get with up, the Air Force? Um, I was actually in civil engineering, so I worked. Uh, I used a lot of uh, heavy equipment, so I operated backhoes, front end loaders, worked on bases, utilities, yeah. things like that. So, but I mean, we had to be up at four o'clock every morning, and we were, you know, we were working by five thirty, and um, just worked our asses off every day. And it was really good for me and really instilled, you know, a, a good work ethic. So even today, he, you know, 25 years later, I still get up at four o'clock every single morning and am productive with my time and all the books that I've read. And we've all read these books, you know, there's one common theme that seems to be, um, you know, in all these books is the most productive people seem to get up early and do think, get the hardest things, uh, you know, that they know they have to tackle that day done first, right? Yeah. Whether it's going to the gym, dealing with a tough email or a tough meeting or a tough phone call or having to fire somebody, you know, these, yeah, unfortunately, but, um, yeah, it's funny. If you look at guys those, like Jocko Wilnick, like their entire social media mm -hmm. news feed is a picture of a sweaty watch at like four 30 in the morning or like yeah. a puddle of sweat at four 30 in the morning. It's you know so I mean? true, man. It's so true. And it's harder as you get older, it's harder to get up that early and grind, yeah, but you still it. do it. But going back to that, you know, those days, um, I mean, I was a young guy in the Air Force. I think I was bringing home like $365 a week, which was just awful. And I had a pregnant girlfriend um, who uh, eventually became my wife. And, you know, I, we just, you know, we ate top ramen and, and, and this is no joke, you know, and, and ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for a long time. I worked two jobs uh, after I got out of the Air Force. She was pregnant. I was trying to put her through medical school. Um, and then after our first was born, we had another one a couple of years later and just struggled as a young family, you know, and I didn't mind doing it. And just because, you know, that's what, you know, you do, you step up to the plate, 
but I had always had that entrepreneurial spirit and just people in my life who had I'd, I'd seen start businesses and do very well, I aspired to be like. So I kind of mimicked and copycatted their habits. And um, who did you I will look tell up to? You, um, well, honestly, I looked up to some of my commanding officers who gave me some really good life advice when I was in the Air Force. Uh, but I had a really good role model. Um, my parents, who were, you know, bless their hearts, I'm still lucky to have them today. I mean, just like I was when I was young, they struggled. I watched them, you know, build a really successful business from nothing, from scratch, literally out of their garage, like you see. Mm. And, you know, I'd always valued their advice. And um, so I, I'd watched that happen uh, over the course of, you know, my late teens and into my 20s. They did really well. And that was really a big driver for me was to, you know, I aspired to be like them. So I'd started, you know, and over the years I had started and watched multiple businesses fail, but every single time I learned something, right? And you hear about failing and failing and failing and you have to fail, you know, but you have to try and you have to start to fail, right? So, and- That's where a lot of guys go wrong is they fail and they stay down, but it's like- No, um, it's hard to get back up, man. It is hard to get yeah. kicked in the nuts and get back up. It sucks. And you put yourself out there again and again. And every few years, you know, we would save up just a little bit of money and we would start another concept of another of another business. But I will I will say is timing has a lot to do with everything, right? But you hear the 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 old term. I, I mean it, what is it? The, the harder I work, I find the luckier I get. Yeah. It's so true. Right. There's another and, one back back to the whole feeling thing because they always say yeah. that a winner is a guy. It, actually, sorry, it's a winner is a loser that tried one more time. One more time. Sorry, yeah. yeah. And I'm a huge up. believer in that. And man, I, I will tell you, and, and and for your for your audience out there, I, I started at least a dozen businesses over the last 25 years. Some with, you know, that took a lot of money to start and some that were just took a couple of thousand bucks to start. And I watched every single one of them kind of peter out and fail. And it wasn't for a lack of effort. I did try. It was timing. It was maybe it was the market or, you know, I was into real estate and mortgage broking and all these things. But, um, you know, timing had a lot to do with it, but I never, ever, ever gave up. And, uh, you know, getting to the story of, you know, about five years ago, um, uh, my wife and I, it's my wife's been a medical practitioner for 18 years. Like I said, I'd put her, help put her through school. And um, our kids had gotten to an age where they didn't really need us as much anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, we started the, the concept of what grew into the largest um, uh, sexual, we'll call it sexual performance clinic uh, in the country. Um, actually started in our living room doing B12 shots and, uh, and vitamin drips. You've heard of these vitamin drips, like the hangover, you know, drip mm -hmm. and, and these types of things. Um, we started doing that in our, literally on our couch and, if we were like, we got it. Now's the time. The kids are getting older. Let's 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 start our, our medical business, right? Mm -hmm. So we start this business in the living room, and that quickly started growing into something that we couldn't sustain out of our house. It got a little weird. You know, the kids would come home from school, and there'd be like these people hooked up to, you know, IV drips. <laughs> And, and we weren't, you know, we weren't experimenting. Uh, it's you know, just go in the basement and watch Hercules. We're just, we're just giving this guy a vitamin. It was, no, it here. was an apartment, man. There was nowhere to hide. Okay, yeah. So. They would come on. I mean, these were, you know, the drips were all uh, protocols that were, you know, try, test, and improve. We didn't make these things yeah. up, but they had a ton of benefit. But it just got weird, and, and we had to, you know, we eventually uh, moved into a larger space and then found the clinic that we're in now, which has grown, um, you know, 10x. So um, what, is the, what is the clinic or what has it specialized in? Like, like what was it that got it off the gr ground that got it recognized? Because because there's a guy, um, you might know him, uh He's the uh, six pack ab shortcut guy. I can't remember his last name. Yeah, yeah, Gary. yeah. You're talking about uh, a um, ah. Gary. He's an old school. Uh, get, uh, yeah. The, uh, anyway, I was at a retreat with him down in Costa Rica yeah. like ten. He's an amazing marketer, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was telling me about how how sixpackabs.com and his ebook basically took off, and he distilled mm -hmm. it down to if you want to grow a business, get into get paid get laid or get six pack abs and he focused <laughs> on to get six pack like he actually owned that domain and he yeah he blew it up like he sold it off for like a ton but your clinic yep. focuses on sexual performance we do yeah so we do a few things here we do um exosomes and stem cell treatments right uh joints hair soft tissue uh you name it uh we do hormone balancing here 
Um, but one of the biggest things that, that we do here, uh, volume wise and treatment number wise is what's known as list or low intensity shockwave therapy, right? And low intensity shockwave therapy has been around for a very long time. It's not something that we invented. We've just wanna, adopted these protocols. Go ahead. I want to just jump in here for a sec because I yeah. want to share my experience and how I came across you. So I'm, I'm kind of yeah. jumping around. You guys are going to have to forgive me for my ADD, but you should <laughs> know me by now. That's all right. That's um, all right. so I was at Ben Greenfield's house in Washington and he was telling this group of men, like we were at this mastermind. And if you don't know who he is, just look him up. But I've, but I've shared links of his stuff before. I've actually had him help me produce a video on, on how to raise your testosterone um, naturally. It's on my channel, you can look it up. Um, but he, like he's got a box, a large box of just stuff that people send him. Everything yeah. from lights that he jams up his nose and these weird <laughs> lights on his head. And he's just known for just basically trying anything. And yeah. here he is in his early 30s, and he's telling us all about this technology. Uh, I can't remember the name of the clinic, but it was the same thing, low-intensity shockwave therapy. Is that would listen? Low-intensity shockwave therapy, yeah, probably That's gains enough. wave. Yeah. That was it, gains wave, yeah. So yeah. he's telling us about this treatment, and he's like, so I fly down to the clinic. You know, they bring me in. This attractive nurse comes in. She puts some stuff <laughs> on my Johnson, and then she blasts my dick, basically, with low-intensity uh, shockwaves. And he goes, huh. and then I walk out of there with the biggest bone I've ever had. He goes, it was like being basically a young teenager again. The wind blows, you get wood. You know, the sun comes out, you get wood. You turn on a light switch, you get wood. It's like, it was unbelievable. So I was like, okay, well, that's interesting. I never heard about anything like that. I go home and I completely forget about it. Yeah. And my buddy Jay, who I'm going to be hosting in my men's private community, by the way, guys, next month for an intensive deep talk on optimizing men's health. My buddy Jay has you on his channel, right? So I don't mm -hmm. subscribe to too much stuff and I see it show up in my newsfeed. I'm like, that's interesting. I click 10 seconds yeah. into the video. I'm like, that's a home unit for the stuff Ben was talking about. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I pre-ordered right there, right? <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Uh, so, so tell me more about your clinic yeah. and how you kind of like distilled this massive like $5,000 treatment into like a $400 unit. Yeah. So guys, uh, you know, these, the, 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 the price and to get this done, unfortunately insurance doesn't cover this type of treatment, which I will, let me just kind of, you know, uh, explain. So this type of, uh, shockwave therapy is not electrical shocks, guys. Those of you that don't know what LIST is, it's a sound wave or sonic wave that penetrates the tissue, which I'll tell you about later, but it's not a shot. It's not an actual electrical shock. It's a sound wave that penetrates the tissue for purposes of regenerating and rebuilding blood flow, right? So blood vessels. Um, and the treatment protocols cost anywhere from $3,000 to $10,000, right? So as you can understand, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money to me. And I own this place, right? And we do more treatments uh, than anybody in the country. We do 20 to 25 sound wave, shock wave treatments every single day. So you can imagine the amount of phone calls that we get from not only all over Los Angeles or California, from all over the country, right? The challenge is, and this is, I saw this coming three and a half years ago was, for every 100 guys that calls the clinic, maybe one or two can afford this treatment, right? Mm -hmm. It's expensive, man. I'm not going to lie. But you, the benefits are incredible, and it absolutely does work. So the concept, right, we want to distill this down into how this was born, was born about three years ago when I just got tired. And and there, we only had, you know, it was me and two other people, my wife and one other person working here at that time. I just got tired of, of hearing guys the, the wind, you know, just come out of their sales. I'm like, they're like, how much does it cost? I'm like, it's three thousand dollars. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, is that something you can afford? And and just like I said, ninety eight percent of them said no. So one day I sat my wife down, Stephanie. I said, there's got to be a better way to do this. There has to be something that we can do to put this in the hands of every guy that wants, needs, and deserves this. And this isn't just for guys that have bedroom issues or erectile dysfunction or Peyronie's disease. This is for any guy that wants increased sexual performance. If you're 30 and you want to feel like you're 21 again, this is for you. There's no side effects and there's no downtime. So what does it do? Because it's it, because it, because it got this entire process of breaking up plaque Here's and blood the, vessels or something? The, 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 the two main benefits are this. It clears blockages out of the blood vessels and every single guy on the planet develops them. I don't care if you're- Where do they come from? Field, it it like just, lifestyle the micro plaque, it's micro plaque floating around in the body. Now, if you live a shitty lifestyle and you're sedentary and you don't work out and you eat like shit and you drink five Cokes a day, you're going to get hit quicker, right? ED mm -hmm. is going to happen faster. But I will tell you, even the most healthy guys on the planet still have micro plaque floating around in their body. 
right? Just like you, you take care of your teeth, you brush your teeth two, three mm -hmm. times a day. You yeah, you're always going to have a plaque things. on your teeth. You still have to go to the dentist, yeah. right? What's the so, youngest guy that you've treated in your clinic, like with excess plaque on their blood vessels? Excess plaque, I would say in their late 20s. But really? I have kids that come uh, young, in yeah. here eight, 18, 19 years old that have developed Peyronie's disease, which is a curvature What's in the that? shaft. Okay, It's a curvature. They call, they call it banana dick. But what uh -huh. happens is basically um, scar tissue can develop from a sexual accident or any type of accident. I've had kids come in here that got hit in the, you know, hit in the junk with a baseball bat or had a bicycle accident or had some type of sexual trauma, right? Where it, they call it like breaking the shaft and scar mm -hmm. tissue develops and it pulls the shaft one way or another. It's embarrassing and it's painful. So the sound waves penetrate that tissue, break up the scar tissue and grow healthy new blood vessels. Okay. And, and how many treatments would somebody have to come? Like, is it, is it five grand a shot or is it five grand for the full sequence of the treatment? Like, how did it work? Of treatments. They call it a protocol, right? So if you mm -hmm. think about the protocols, there's several different protocols out there, but the standard protocol um, is six, eight or 12 treatments. And obviously the more you need, the more it costs, right? But a sequence of six treatments is usually around $3,000. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so they'd have to come into your clinic, whip out their job. Yeah. The yes. nurse would put their lotion on it, blast it with the sound waves, and they go home and come back again in like two or three weeks? Every week. It's once a week for six weeks. Or How big is the unit in the clinic? Like, is it a massive piece of equipment? I've never seen one before. Yeah, just imagine like a, like a medium-sized suitcase looking thing, and it's got this like scary gun come on off of it. Right. And, you know, a lot of guys are intimidated by it. So when they come in and we sit down and do a consultation, I take them in the room and I kind of turn it on. I put it on their hand, just kind of ease their nerves a little bit. You know, I'm like, see, it's not that bad. It doesn't you know, hurt. It, is, it doesn't hurt. Um, if you're, this, every guy's a little different from a sensitivity standpoint. So some guys have to use numbing cream on the shaft and some guys don't. Mm -hmm. So, if, you know, there are different levels and settings on the, on the device itself, but it can hurt if you turn it all the way up and you're kind of sensitive and you don't put numbing cream on. Yeah. Okay. So sorry, I'm just, you know, jumping everywhere here because I find this oh, so, cool. such a fascinating story. Okay. So the clinic's yeah. doing in clinic treatment now, like as an entrepreneur though, is yeah. it, is it more profitable for you to have them come into the clinic and, and do it that way? That way they're tied to it or does it make better it, sense to build an at home unit? Like I'm guessing the at home unit has some benefit to you, right? Yeah. So the immediate benefit is of course, have them come into the clinic. It is more profitable, but the reality is, is I don't care if there's a, the, the clinic's name is Novus, but I don't care if there's a hundred or 500 Novuses around the globe. There's no way we could ever treat, ever treat the amount of men that actually need this ever. Right. <clears throat> so the home use device was designed to be able to put in the hands of every single guy that wants needs and deserves this in the privacy mm -hmm. of his own home. So Can from we, a scalable um, standpoint, the home use device makes much more sense. Here I'm gonna I'm gonna try to share this. Uh, here it is. Uh, we'll use Jay's video here. So <laughs> oh, this, yeah, you guys, this, this is, is very real. I can tell you. Watch this, guys. This is uh, this is Jay being the guinea pig here. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger here on the screen. <clears throat> you gotta so, turn the sound. So where's the sound? Can, can, you, can you get the sound, sound in here? I'll go back to the beginning. They gotta hear this. I'm holding the amazing rocket device right now and i am literally probably the first person for sure right in the world to do a video on this product so as i told you guys this is literally a so is that the finished product like the distills a massive unit that's down the, the uh, unit? that's the final prototype we've gone through 17 prototypes guys in the last 18 months yeah that's the that's the final prototype uh, we we just in the last couple of weeks to finished up the final industrial design, which mm -hmm. I'm super uh, model, which I'm super excited to release. So it does look a lot more streamlined than that, but the internal technology is exactly the same. So so this is a way that normal customers would have to do is they have to come in and she'd be working on it while he's sitting there. I mean, he's talking to his wife, yeah. obviously filming it, right? Yeah, yeah, his wife filming it. Yeah, yeah. So she'd be so, doing yeah, that they thing lay on the table. Away. And yep. that's the sound that it makes. Yes. Okay, so okay, that's going to be a game changer. That's that's just so. Okay, sorry about well, that. Well, no, it's cool. No, so, I, I don't mind you jumping around at all. So we so we distilled this very expensive and very embarrassing treatment down into a device that guys can use in the privacy of their own home. I need to throw this out there. The three main, you know, guys, over fifty percent of men over the age of forty are going to or are experiencing some type of ED in their life right now, right? 
So the three main reasons why guys do not or cannot get treatment for this type of problem are the following. One, accessibility. Maybe he lives in Africa where there's no, you know, shockwave tech, you know, technology, mm -hmm. you know, clinics around. Two, affordability, which is probably the biggest one actually, right? Three to $10,000, right? For just a series of treatments, that's it. And you're done, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the embarrassment factor, those three things right there. A lot of guys that have access to this clinic or a clinic like ours and can't afford it still will not do it because of the sheer embarrassment factor. Mm -hmm. So the device has literally shattered all three of those barriers. So like what kind of obstacles were you up against when you had to like distill down a, a large suitcase down to a hand unit? Cause this is obvious. I mean, is this made in the States? Do you have the parts sourced from Asia or how did you deal with all that? There are a lot of obstacles. I mean, first and foremost, I should tell you, I've been told my, no, I've been told no my entire life. Yeah. Right. And when someone tells me no, guess what that does? You yeah. Know? It makes you want to do it so, even more. Well, if you're anything you like me anyway. Yeah. I've been told no my entire life. Yeah. So, F those um, guys. Yeah. F them. So when I came up with the concept um, and I eventually met uh, the partner that we brought in, who happens to be a genius engineer um, and very, very savvy with patents and intellectual property, he said, I showed, shared with him the idea and he's like, I can build that. And I'm like, yeah, right. Let me see this. A lot of people mm -hmm. say a lot of things. Three weeks later, he walked into my office, which was uh, with, with the first prototype we now call Frankenstein. Cause it was just big, you know, heavy contraption, it was all metal and there were wires and springs coming out of it. Um, <laughs> which is, it's now on the wall. It's now on the, 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 the penis wall of fame. But, um, you know, we had lots of obstacles, you know, there was, what was the uh, biggest obstacle you had? Like what was the biggest hurdle for you? It was really, you um, you know, infringing because this technology has been around so long, mm -hmm. it was really, uh, navigating the minefield of infringing on someone else's intellectual property. Right. So up until now, no one, no one has been able to uh, reproduce this type of energy signature at a cost that is affordable to virtually every guy on the planet, right? There are lots of different shockwave devices on the market that cost anywhere from $3,000 to $50,000, right? So no one's been able to do this. But so as you can imagine, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of patents out there protecting their intellectual property, and there should be. So the biggest challenge was how do we reproduce the identical en energy signature that comes out of these expensive medical devices and clinics all over the world at a cost that's affordable for everybody? That was mm -hmm. the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've done it. And uh, like the conventional solutions for most people that don't want to go to like a, a clinic like uh, the one Ben you know described to me or the one that you guys run as well, um, yeah. their options are like what? Like pills, like uh, Viagra, Cialis? Of course, you know that. What are those doing versus breaking up the plaque? Like, okay, so I'm glad you asked that. So yeah, I tell okay. everybody here the same thing. They're they're all those pills are they're called vasodilators. They've been around a long time. They dilate the blood vessel. So if this is the constricted blood vessel right here, right, built mm -hmm. up with plaque and scar tissue, the Viagra's and the world, you know, the you know, Tadalafils of the world just dilate the blood vessel. That okay. it allows the blood to flow through. But as soon as the drug leaves the body, this is what you're left with. Got right? it. So what, sh what the shockwave does is it safely and efficaciously clears the blockages out so that you don't need these drugs. So and is it a it's really, it's really gets to the root of the problem. And is it permanent or do you have to keep using it? It's like brushing your teeth or, or what? So I, I tell everybody the same thing. It's like going, it's to, like the going dentist, to the dentist, right? Okay. You go to the dentist twice a year so you can clean your teeth off. You should get one or two of these treatments done a year. Unless you actually buy this, buy a device like this, then you can use it whenever you want in the privacy of your own home. Right. I still do this once a month. I mean, I've had probably two dozen of these treatments over the last three years, but I do it to myself once a month. It's just part of like my men's health routine. Right, 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 right. Huh. Yeah. Um, so going what? back into the production yeah, side. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yes. yeah oh, I'm fascinated uh, by the whole production thing too. Yeah, the, so that was another tricky piece. It's like, okay, well, how do we produce this again at a cost that makes sense to everybody um, at, you know, uh, and, and still keep uh, a handle on quality control? Um, we do have uh, a partner uh, in uh, based in China, American-owned factories in China producing the device for us. Uh, they're building, they're tooling the molds right now, and we're testing mm -hmm. uh, different um, uh, different types of um, materials, right, when it comes to the tip and things like that. Um, but it's been kind of tricky up to this point, and we've got the cost right where we need it to be to be able to put this out, again, at a, at, at a price that makes sense for everybody. So um, 
I got a question for you about your factory situation in China yeah. uh, that's related yeah. to the business. But yeah, guys, we're going to be taking calls on the show tonight. So I'm going to drop the join link in a minute. Uh, Josh is screening calls for me tonight. So if you have a question for myself or my guest tonight, Dustin, um, I want you to click the link, join in. Make sure you got good video and audio, anything to do with business, anything about a conversation about chasing excellence, anything to do about playing to win. Uh, we're happy yeah. to take that. Um, the whole thing in China though, they're world famous for knocking off other people's shit and calling it yep. their own. Um, yeah, I have course. a friend of mine that was in a toy business for a long time and he actually ran two businesses, one, one folded and he went for a second round and he sold that for a large multiple. But, uh -huh. um, he had a toy factory in China that basically took the molds and they just copied the toy out the back door and they repurposed it and sold it for like, you know, half the price. But yeah. how do you? How do you protect um, a product that you build that's that's like got certain technologies in it that most people can't get to their household? Let's talk about the business side, which I'm fascinated yeah. by. Um, this technology, we'll talk about later in, in, in exactly what it does. But I want to talk about the business side because I love this. And I think this can bring a lot of value uh, to, to your audience here. So um, I, my partner's uh, name is uh, John Hoffman. He's really the genius engineer behind this home use device. And this is something I learned from him two years ago when we started working on this uh, on this in incredible product. Um, this is something that stuck with me and I think about every single day. And if you take one thing away from this show, take this right now. According to classical marketing theory, there are three desirable positions in the marketplace that you want to occupy. If you can mm -hmm. occupy one, if you can, uh, good. If you can occupy, occupy two, great. If you can occupy all three, you're going to crush it, right? So one, you can be the first to market. Two, you can be the best. Or three, you can be the lowest cost. Let me you say that one more time. Even better. First to market, best product, lowest cost, right? So mm -hmm. getting to your question was how do you – how do you ensure that China doesn't knock you off or any of these other countries, right? If you are first to market and you put out the best product at the lowest cost, that's literally closing all three of those doors down, right? So the biggest thing when you talk about China is the cost, right? How can you build it cheaper than China can? Well, if we are able to offer this product at a cost that doesn't entice the Chinese to come in and knock us off, Mm -hmm. and, 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 and have them say, well, what's the point? Because they could sell it, you know, as low as, as low a cost as we can, then they're not going to eventually they might. Right. But by that time, we're going to be so far in front, front of them with brand equity and patents all over the country. So when you think about this in China, let's say they do end up knocking it off. They still can't sell it in the U S mm -hmm. we will hold the patents. They can't sell it in the UK. We hold the patents. They can't sell in Canada. They can't sell it. In, and they would only be able to sell it in China, right? Where there literally is no IP law. Right. Uh, so again, First to market, best product, lowest cost. And we believe that we uh, are occupying all three of those um, positions right now. So uh, this is kind of interesting, right? Because um, you don't know this, but before I started pressing uh, broadcast or upload to YouTube, I was in the debt business. Well, I still am kind of. But um, okay. one of the things that I noticed when we brought our service out to the market was we were definitely the lowest cost. We were definitely the best value. And we were first to the Canadian market, arguably the first to the Canadian market. Okay. And then about two years, um, because we put, s s I mean, it was such a small dent in the universe. Like it was a tiny dent in okay. the profit margins of the banks and the credit card companies because we saved people so much money. What we basically did was settle the debt. So somebody had like 10 grand and a visa. Uh, they were delinquent. They couldn't pay it. They were yeah. you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul. They just weren't having a good life. We would negotiate yeah. a settlement and they pay like four grand, let's say. Um, okay. If you do that enough times, you get on the radar screen of your competitors, uh, regulators, mm -hmm. policymakers. Yeah, of so course. what sort of risks are you exposed to bringing, bringing a, what's widely accepted as an in-clinic unit that mm -hmm. probably most clinics want to sell because they want people to come in and subscribe for a $5,000 treatment over six or seven or eight of treatments or something like that. Like, What's the potential risk assessment that you've looked at from your perspective anyway, from competition, regular regulators, policymakers, AG, whatever, right? So um, let's look at competition. Uh, you know, when someone's trying to copy you, I mean, you could take that as a compliment, but the reality is, is that you have to stay well in front of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
and going back to yes, we've looked at the con we've looked at okay, well, who can knock us off? Who has enough money to knock us off? Or not, I shouldn't say knock us off, become a competitor with maybe their own technology, right? But again, we believe that we have um, uh, of we've engineered and built a technology that delivers the exact same energy signatures these other devices do at a cost that no one is going to be able to compete with us at. They just mm -hmm. can't. And we've researched for two years all the patents out there and we've gone through several different uh, um, iterations and prototypes and and narrowed it down to this one type of, of, of technology that produces this, this energy signature that no one else can touch, right? So I may be wrong and um, I seriously doubt it. We've had, we've hired some very expensive patent attorneys to kind of help us along the way and do the research and dig and dig and dig and dig and dig. Mm -hmm. But um, there's going to be competition. There's always going to be competition. But again, if we can occupy all three or two thirds of these desirable positions in the marketplace, we're going to win. Right. And I'm certainly and, uh, very confident in that. And I'll, um, talk to, I'll talk about the regu re regulatory. Yeah. 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 Want me to. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I want to ask about that. Um, guys, yeah, so, as you're piling up into the waiting area, just stand by. It's, it's probably going to be another 15 or 20 minutes before we take calls, but just sit there and listen. But um, yeah. So go ahead with the regulators. Yeah. So with regulatory, as you can imagine, so I own a, a medical clinic here in Studio City. So um, we adhere to, you know, all, all the right regulations that we, that we should. And we have, you know, medical malpractice insurance and, and you know, general liability, all that stuff. So um, uh, regulatory is always a, a, um, a, a pinnacle concern. Right. And what I will say is that uh, we've gone through great lengths to um, to ensure or at least at least start the process of um, staying in the good graces of the federal government, right? So let's talk about the FDA. Um, there are certain things you can and can't do and, and can say and cannot say according to kind of where you're at in the process, you know, of any type of, you know, unless you're selling some type of supplement, but when you're talking about, you know, a medical device and something that's already been recognized by the FDA being done in clinics, we are on, we are going to be on the radar when you're talking about on a mass scale, because we're going some very, very, very large platforms in the next three to four months, Dr. Oz, you know, these types of, uh, you know, nationally, mm -hmm. internationally recognized shows, um, we are, we're, we're probably already on their radar. But what I will tell you is, is that we are working through the government regulatory process right now to be able to make the kind of claims that we're making with this device, meaning the product is already FDA uh, registered, right? Which is step mm -hmm. one, not a very easy thing to do. Step two is getting what's called a 510K, which is a pre-market notification. We are in the middle of that. We are doing everything that the government is asking us to do, right? According mm -hmm. to the claims that we want to make with this. So um, it's really, when you're talking about a business model and it's not cheap, um, I'll tell you, we have our own skin in the game and it's a lot of money. What um, about the risk of like, I mean, people always like to overdo things. Like what if somebody decides <laughs> to go you asked. And, go and break their deck and then they blame yeah. you for it, right? Like, of course. Because, because it's a medical device. Like, isn't that a You're risk right. as well? And, and look, it's of course it's a risk. I mean, building a car is a risk, right? Like you see on these big combines on these farms, there's huge stickers on the side that says, don't stick your hand in this thing. It'll chew your arm off. Right. You have to like you have to protect yourself as a business. There's always going to be that one idiot or two idiots or dozens of idiots that think more is better. Right. And they're going to mm -hmm. abuse the machine. So going back again to my genius partner, John Hoffman, we sat down and over the course of six months, penciled out like everything that we could possibly think of where someone could abuse this device. Here's what I would tell you. And this is all part of wrapped into our global patents mm -hmm. is that the um the uh, electronic controls within the device in the circuit board will not let someone over treat themselves. I'm going to say that again. It physically cannot over treat somebody. How you ask? Because after the device is done going through one treatment cycle, which lasts about 15 minutes, it shuts off and does not turn on again for three days. Right? So it literally cannot be abused. Mm. Are you going to get that 0.01% that is going to hack into the device? Of course. Like, w what do you want me to do about that? You know what I mean? But, you know, all the proper disclosures will be made in the uh, uh, in, uh, in the handbooks, on the websites. There are literally, you know, a dozen videos showing how to mm. use it, how not to use it. So the only thing you can do is just have, you know, disclaimers, you know, as much as you can on the websites, in the literature, you know, uh, 
So that's all you can really do to protect yourself with any product. But yeah. we've gone through we've gone through a ton of engineering and spent a lot of money to make this device as safe as possible. Okay, so like um, you know, kind of kind of being the devil's advocate here. Of course. Um, actually, let me kind of go to Amazon for a second. I just want to go sure. there because I've got I've got guys that um, use FBA. And Amazon is almost like the Chinese in the sense where they'll rip off a product that that shows up well in the algorithms. Like, how do you guys mm -hmm. distribute this? Is it is it through uh, platforms, marketing? Is it advertising? Is it right? Is it right now, it's just it advertising. Shopify? Right now, it's just right now, it's advertising, and it's and affiliate partners. Right. By the way, guys, I have a link for you in a bit, but I just wanted to get the the story behind this. Yeah. Eventually, we we plan on moving to uh, in 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 Amazon you know, type of platform or Amazon, um, you know, so that guys can, you know, get this literally prime, like two day shipping. Right? Is there, We're not is there a risk with it though? Because I've, because I've heard stories from guys that have placed their product on, on Amazon. Uh, it shows up well in the rankings, gets good reviews, lots of good sales. And then what they do is they make like a Amazon discount product under a different brand name. I mean, maybe with a t-shirt or something like that, it's easier, but if you hold patents, I guess it, yeah. it's, it would stop them from doing something like that. Like, is yeah, there any you risk there? So. Like, I hate of physical course, products. They scare the crap oh, out of me. I know, <laughs> of course. Uh, but again, going back to the uh, the the I the IP, the intellectual property that we believe strongly believe, we have built a deep and wide moat around with multiple patents. Um, we believe that we've protected our technology to a point to where it wouldn't make sense for someone like Amazon to knock us off. And Got if it. they do, I'll come at them. I got a I got an interesting question that popped up here in the comments just on YouTube. Yeah. I want to read off. It says, uh, if you don't mind me asking, does this treatment increase sensitivity or just volume erectile response? I'm glad you asked that because LIST, low intensity shock therapy, has been uh, proven to increase sensitivity. In fact, I get a lot of guys that come into the clinic that they're like, hey, look, my erections are fine. I just have a problem reaching climax. And does this increase sensitivity? The answer is yes, because it does help regenerate nerve tissue. How does it do that? Like, how does it regenerate nerve tissue with like shockwave, like with sound? Like, how does that work? Like, I've had shockwave therapy on my knee before because I had uh -huh. patella tendonitis on my left knee from squatting too much in my tw 20s like an idiot. Um, right. And that helped out quite a bit. But like, like, how does the technology work? It recruits fibrobla fibroblasts and growth factors by causing what's called micro trauma. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like going to the gym. Right. And I tell everybody the same thing. This is like taking your penis to the gym. Right. Treat it like a muscle. So it breaks tissue. So down Kegels are not enough. <laughs> Kegels are not enough. No. So uh, it creates micro trauma. It's like bench press for your penis. I tell people laugh, but it's true. Right. So it it, it, it might causes micro trauma to the tissue in a safe, efficacious way. I don't want that to scare people, but um, it causes micro trauma to the tissue that tells the brain send growth factors and fibroblasts down to that area, increase the blood flow there to repair that tissue. Right. Mm -hmm. So which also increases sensitivity. Um, here, I'm going to drop the link in the chat for you guys if you want to. Um, get an order in. So yeah. how does this work? Because this is a pre-order. Like I bought mine even before I even talked to Jay. And then Jay sent me a text yeah. message a couple of days after. And he's like, dude, you have to talk to these guys. They got this product, this revolutionary, this and that. I'm yeah. like, dude, I already bought one. He's like, awesome. I'm going to connect you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so how it's working right now is we're taking pre-orders, right? At a, at a, at a very steep discount, almost 50% off. Um, when we're done taking pre-orders, uh, so right now the device is $399, which is a steal, guys. Um, but when we're done taking pre-orders, uh, that price is going to go up to $749, which is kind of over, over, around that uh, that sweet spot that pushes that thres threshold of what we found guys can afford. Okay, uh, but this is this is you know it's something that is near and dear to every guy's heart is having a healthy sex life, and that's really uh, you know what the price is going to end up being. So they can pre-order it now. Um, sometime in the next thirty days, we'll end up uh, ending that promotion. But for right now, it's $399. Um, I should say, you know, just every, so everybody knows out there that uh, the product will not ship until January. That's the trade off for the steep discount. Got it. And how does that like from a from a business perspective, because I want to like yeah. this, the show's, you know, focusing on, on that from a of business pr perspective. Why does a pre-sale strategy look attractive to you? Like, why does that work? Is it is it for proof of concept is to make sure that people subscribe that 
to it that it'll actually work before you ship out the no i know or... they will i mean my clinic is, has been proving it for the last three and a half years you know mm. i know that though that you know that the the proof of concept isn't there and i've had people ask me over the last three years like when are they when is someone going to come up with a home use device that you know that is safe and works so uh you know the we didn't need the proof of concept you know it is helping you know finalize the design as you can imagine it's very very expensive uh to do something like this but we're mm. in the home stretch and we're we're pretty much done um, regardless of, you know, getting FDA clearance or not, you don't need FDA clearance to put this type of product on the market, but we want to do everything the right way and stay in the good graces of the government. So, um, yeah, there's some of the pre-orders are helping to, uh, pre-fund some of this. Um, but we're at, we're at that threshold right now where we're, we're moving into production stage. Cool. Um, yeah. so I've, I've dropped the call in link again in the chat guys. Um, I'm hoping it's populating everywhere because with StreamYard, it's supposed to publish to all the streams at the same time. So you may see it double on YouTube, for example, but I'm, forgive me, I'm trying to figure it out. Um, just yeah. trying to think, like, what other questions should somebody be asking you about making a physical product that's a home use device from a $5,000 you know, price point down to 400 bucks? Like, if yeah. they, you know, if you could go back and ask yourself this question when you started all this, like, what advice would you give yourself? Well, the first thing is, okay, well, show me, how does it, you know, show me it does the same thing these, these uh, devices do uh, in the clinics, right? So what we've done is we've gone through, like I said, 18 months of hardcore engineering, and we've been able to mimic the exact same energy signature that these devices in clinics do with, uh, with the rocket, right? And if you go on the website, you'll see a video where we literally, literally demonstrate side by side the exact same shock wave being put out by both devices and it's very real i can tell you and the device that we used uh is called a force plate which was very expensive uh but the device is called a force plate that we use to help calibrate uh the exact same energy signature as these clinics have in these devices so is it so like that's tuning a tuning a guitar because it's, it's like, tuning like a you guitar. have to exactly. get it exact um and it's it a certain wavelength that does it or it needs to be close it's really about the rise time and the sharp the sharpness is that what breaks up the plaque device. in the blood vessels? That's what breaks up the plaque. So it's, it's that the, shock wave and that the boom, boom, boom. It looks like an EKG. If you go look at the video on the website, it goes 15 times per second. That's the and that's what that sound is that I heard on Jay's video. That's what that, pop, 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 <laughs> that right? That's okay. exactly right. Yeah. Got yeah. It. Got it. So um, that's what breaks up the plaque and grows new blood vessels. But if I had to, you know, if I, you know, saw myself three years ago and said, okay, well, how can you show that this device is going to produce the exact same results? It's really comes down to the science and the testing that we've done. And guys, we've done, you know, small rounds of clinical trials for the last 14, 15 months here in this clinic. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you can just see from the testimonials on the website, these guys, you know, getting the, getting the amazing results that they are. Cool. Um, yeah. I want to open it up to calls, like, unless you have any other wisdom or trinket that you want to dispense on this before we take some calls. No, well, the main thing the was like, you know, I want to throw out there one more thing before we take calls is, um, getting back to the business side of this and mm -hmm. just having that entrepreneurial spirit and, and, and playing to win, um, is, you know, you got, you guys got to find a reason, right? You can't, there, there, there has to be some type of insane motivation to pull you into this direction of entrepreneurship, right? And when you get kicked in the nuts enough times, man, you want to quit, you know, there has to be something there that tells you not to quit. And my personal reason I'll share was, you know, at being, uh, you know, at such having a family at such a young age, you know, I, it was the trade off of starting a family when I got much older and, you know, and was able to afford it. I literally couldn't afford to have kids. So I worked my ass off and I just, I didn't want to work my ass off anymore. So getting out of bed every morning and providing for my family was really my motivation. And I took a lot of pride in that on being able to put food on the table. And I was, I will tell you guys, I was scared shitless of not being able to do that and providing for my own family. And that's what really got me out of bed every day at four o'clock in the morning to go out there and bust my ass and take orders from people for 20 years until I didn't have to anymore. Mm -hmm. So you guys have to find a very, very compelling reason to pull you in a direction uh, that can get, you know, uh, insane at times and have peaks and valleys. Love it, man. I'm going to have some more questions for you as we go through. Georgie, yeah, of ready to go? Give me a thumbs up, yeah? All right. Georgie, Porgy, Pudding and Pie. We're going to put you back on here. Jo Georgie's one of my regulars that, that calls in on a show called Before the Train Wreck. Hello. Hey, Georgie. How you doing, Hello. man? So what's your question tonight, man? I'm fine, guys. How are you? I see. Good. Okay. 
So jump to the first thought. I will write down the question. Yes. So my question is kind of like this, you know, how to manage our time uh, when you are young? How to manage your time when you're young? How well, when you're young, you got a. <laughs> when you got when you're young, you got a lot of energy, right? Um, <laughs> I will tell you, limiting the partying is a big one, right? When you're young, it's really easy to to you know to kind of slip into that, uh, you know, that phase of wanting to you know live live your youth, and you should do that, and you should have fun. But again, going back to what your long term goals are, write them down. Like still to this day, in my bathroom, I have sticky notes you know, up on, I have to stare at every day while I brush my teeth of what my goals are, right? And I have to, I physically make myself look at them every single day, what my long-term goals are, right? So I think that that will help you stay on track. Um, you know, it, it's it's a, 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 it's about baby steps, right? I'm a big believer in writing things down. You guys, you read this stuff all the time and you hear people say, write it down, write it down, write it down. I literally start my day by writing out the tasks that I have to get done, starting from the hardest task to the easiest task, right? So if, if I could say, give you one, if I could give you one nugget to take away from that question is every single day, write down your top five to seven tasks in order of toughness to tackle, right? Get the hardest ones done first, get it done and get it over with. Because if not, you'll push it out to the end of the day, that turns into tomorrow, that turns into next week. So time management, write down your top tasks every single day and tackle the hardest ones first. So um, you use sticky notes on a bathroom yeah. mirror. You know what I use? I use a dry erase marker. Cool. I love that. Because you just wipe I, it off when I'll you're done with it. Just wipe. You know yeah. what? I love that too. I'm going to start doing that. Yeah. Write that down. Dry erase marker. Does that make sense, Georgie? Yeah, I kind of want to, you know, um, it's uh, it's just something that I never thought of. I've kind of read in books and you know, at some point in my life, I tried to write down my goals in the morning, what I wanted uh -huh. to achieve. Uh, but, you know, the, when there would be a situation that I would not be able to do certain things, by for example, top five lists, I would become like really angry uh, at myself. And uh, so how? Well, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't beat yourself up too bad. I mean, I, look at, you know, I'm 44 years old and I, you know, probably realize that I know less now than I ever have. So don't beat yourself up, you know, over not getting something done in six weeks. Here's what I tell everybody the same thing too. Like as long as you're moving forward, I don't care how slow or how fast you're moving, just don't stop, right? So you guys have all heard this before. You know, you stop on the tracks, a train's going to run you over. I don't care if you're crawling, move forward. So you have like, uh, you guys have like uh, daily goals and goals you guys have to achieve in six months and year like this. Yes. Oh, Yes, the way yes. that I like I'm to glad. do it on my end is Go I'll ahead. have three that I want to do per week, right? Mm -hmm. And it could be something significant. It, it may not even be that significant, but there's three main things that I want to get out of the way, usually at least every three days minimum, right? Or, or sorry, minimum would be like, you know, once a week, max would be like every three days and I'll just keep rotating them, right? But you just focus mm -hmm. on what matters, right? You focus on, and, you know, by the time you're kind of older, like, you know, us, uh, <laughs> you're still a young guy, right? Um, you're still a young guy. You know, you start to recognize that, okay, there's only so many grains of sand left in the hourglass uh, and you want to get the best ROI in your time. So you tend not to waste time on dumb stuff that doesn't have a payoff, right? Yep. So you just have to get clear on what those things are. And I love that you keep asking these questions at such a young age. How old are you again? It's great. 21. 22. Or sorry, 21? 21. 21. Yeah. And it's funny, Richard, you mentioned like I'm young and you guys are old because I wanted to like kind of, you know, I ask a second question kind of stuff that's same. You know, as a young guy, I have a problem that none of you guys had when you were, you know, in my age and young. You know, there is a porno, there is YouTube, social media, <laughs> right. there is Netflix. There is hey, movies. we still had porn when we were kids, man. They had them in magazines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which turned into like beta and VHS tapes. Yeah. But like, I mean, in my case, uh, in, I know, as a young man, like, there's so many things that just wants to take away my time, right? Those are distractions. Uh, and yeah, I empathize with you. And, and I certainly realize that. And I got kids your age, right? So I, I understand that. Um, you, you sound like a bright young guy and you're asking all these, all these amazing questions. Um, you're right. Like when Rich and I were growing up, we didn't have, there was no Facebook, there was no YouTube, there was none of that to distract us. You're, you're absolutely right. But we had other distractions, trust me. Um, you know, kids, when we were kids, we were doing that, we were doing crazy stuff that, you know, you, you would look at me like, you guys are crazy. So, 
again, going back to managing your time, though, you have to realize what's important. You have to day part that stuff, you know, social media, set a time aside for that, right? You know, hang out with your friends, set a time aside for that. But you should always be working on something for yourself every single day. I don't care if it's just 20 minutes, right? Again, believing in your goals and seeing them and writing them down, putting them on your, you know, your bathroom. I'm a big fan of the bathroom mirror or the refrigerator, right? You spend a lot of time in front of the refrigerator and you spend a decent amount of time in the bathroom mirror. So those are two places that you're going to see every single day. And you got to look at yourself in the mirror, right? You'll know, you'll know if you're, you know, if you're wasting your time, look at that. Dollar store, man. I got yep. these in every room. I got even a whiteboard go right, go here, right behind there me. I go. got them everywhere. And they work Bullet great point on mirrors. Your goals on your bathroom mirror. And even if it's just a week at a time, like Rich said, you know, write down three goals that you want to accomplish that week. By the just way, George, reading. Since, since a lot of guys are always very interested in how to get the girls on my channel, if you're doing it right and you leave one of these in the bathroom, before she leaves, she's gonna write you a little love note on the mirror. If she sees, <laughs> if she sees you chasing excellence over here with your goals, yeah, go over to the side one day. You're gonna have a little love note from her and, and a little girl's handwriting, not little, you know, but yeah. in female handwriting. You're gonna be like, aha, you know, it's for more than just goals. Okay, um, it's for more. There's also goals. a really good book recommendation that I want to give you. Uh, it's called Atomic Habits by James Clear. Yes, I just read that about six Great months book. ago. Yeah, Great book. Get on his newsletter too. The guy has a ton of nuggets and I've taken a bunch of stuff from his book and already started applying it in my life. Correct. Great okay. book. Great book, Georgie. Grab that so one. So okay? Atomic Habits by James. So James okay. Clear. James Clear. Okay. So I want to share, uh, share kind of practical thing that happened to me today because because of this, I asked this question today. So I was reading this book and I, uh, you know, I read this book like, it was like an hour and a half and I decided- well, What's the book? Let's... Sorry, I didn't see it there. It's yeah, uh, hold it up there. Law of success in sixteen. Law of successes. Okay. Law of success. Yeah. Yeah, and I was reading this book you know, like hour and a half, and I was like, "Let me take a rest." And I t turned off my phone, and I you know, clicked the Wi-Fi button, and I hear like messages from Instagram, um, like Facebook message messages as well. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. some sort of notifications, YouTube updates. <laughs> like, yes. And I wasted the next hour and a half to check these yeah. things out. Of course, it and and it triggers like anxiety, like oh, I got to get back to these people, or I got to see this message. And again, it's a big distraction. But the best thing you did was turn off the Wi-Fi so that you could read that book. You mm -hmm. have to put yourself in in a in an area where there are as little distractions as possible. I mm -hmm. like to read. I have an, an infrared sauna in my room. You can go mm -hmm. pick them up relatively cheap on Amazon these days. But I bought an infrared sauna and I sauna probably three or four days a week in the morning just for fit, you know, 15, 20, 25 minutes. That's my time. I leave my phone out in the kitchen charging. I turn everything off. I get in there. I turn. There's a red light. I turn the red light on and I just sit there and I sweat and I read for a good 15 or 20 minutes every single day and no one can bother me. Mm -hmm. you know. And then when I get out of, the, when I get out of that, I take a shower, then I go deal with what I got to deal with. So that book that I just mentioned um, is going to help you deal with distractions too, right? Like it, like it basically shows you how to habit stack so that you get the best ROI on your time when you're trying to mm -hmm. accomplish tasks yes. as well. And it helps you focus on the things that matter and uh, dismiss things that don't matter. Okay. Cool. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, check it out. See you guys. All right, dude. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Georgie. Um, guys, the call in and ask a question link is there in the chat. It, it just says streamyard.com and then forward slash a bunch of numbers and stuff. So click that. Uh, Josh will just make sure that your audio and videos are working. Again, the show is playing to win. So if you have a question about how to play, play to win at life, uh, hopefully more specifically towards building a business, uh, maybe something you're stuck on in your own business, give it a click and ask us a question. I got some stuff here in the chat that I want to hit on. Uh, I got sure. a super chat here from Claw Dog. Uh, let me dig Claw it up here. Claw dog. There it is. Uh, he says, what about using a rocket over heart and organ plaque? Okay. So I've gotten this question a bunch over the years. And um, what I will say as a disclaimer is it, I, it's unproven. They are doing clinical uh, trials right now, clinically testing the medical grade devices on uh, shockwave over the heart. And I'm hearing uh, rumbles of, you know, success. But again, as a disclaimer, Talk to your doctor before you try anything like that. We don't do that here in the clinic. It's not our specialty, right? Um, however, I do believe that low intensity shockwave therapy in the near future will be used to remove plaque all over the body, including the heart. But again, 
I will tell you, I am not a medical doctor. I have not proven this to be true. And check with your your doctor, of course, before even you know trying anything like that. But um, I do believe it's going to help in the very near future. Yes. Are you guys going to be putting together a product in the future? Like I've got a torn bicep muscle, so it's probably like eighty five percent efficiency strength. Like it's it's just never been where it was before. Yeah, we like, are. Would that, so would that help muscle tissue and absolutely. blood vessels in there? So. Just a quick little history on low intensity shockwave therapy. It's been around for a very long time. Doctors in Europe have been have been using it on soft tissue and musculoskeletal uh, tears like on the biceps for 30 years. Guys, there are hundreds of clinical studies proving that it's safe and it's efficacious. And yes, the exact same technology that we are uh, delivering in the rocket will be in, uh, in use in orthopedics in the next 12 months. So it can be used on soft tissue all over the body. Awesome. Again, uh, breaking down that tissue, pushing blood flow and growth factors to that area to repair the tissue. Got another one here. I'm just scrolling up to find it. Uh, Jared, Jared, he's one of my members in the community. Where are you? I'm trying to find it so I can put it up on the screen. I might just have to read it. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, there it is, Jared. All right. Uh, if you'd like to start a business and really want the freedom that comes with that, how did you come up with your business idea? How do you find what market to break into? This is like... See, yeah. this is a very early on question. And when somebody says, how did you come up with your business idea? A lot of people mm -hmm. will, will come up, you know, come at me with like, okay, so how do I start a business? Like, what's a good idea? Like, how do you find a market to break into? Yeah. I've got some thoughts so, on that, but I want to let you go ahead first. Yeah. So um, I will say again, I, I'm not a big believer in, uh, in, in, in luck. I find the harder I work, the luckier I get. Um, I was in the uh, shockwave business before we actually got into developing this home use device, right? So I saw an opportunity in a massive, massive, massive market, right? And you look at like what big pharmaceutical companies, there's, they sell $6 billion worth of Viagra a year, right? It's mm -hmm. it just an insane market. So in a market like that, how do you differentiate, differentiate yourself and become unique? Well, that's the, the billion dollar question, right? So there are a few different um, ways you can start a business. You can look at solving a problem that somebody already knows they have, right? Or you can create a product or service and then try to make uh, uh, people aware that, that they need to solve this problem that they don't yet know they have. That's the harder way to do it, right? So um, if you can create a product or a service that solves a problem that someone already knows they have, you don't have to convince them that, they're, they're, that there's a problem. They already know there's a problem, right? Handlebars on bikes, like whatever it is, you know what I mean? Like, so, um, but it should be unique and it should be scalable, right? It needs to be something you can sell online in your sleep. And I'll share this with your viewers. And you know this, guys, if you can't make money in your sleep, you're going to work until you die. So remember that I started several businesses that required these two hands to be there to physically make money. You cannot scale like this with these. You can't, right? So how do you duplicate yourself times a million, right? It's got to be a product or a service that you can sell online in your sleep. Don't make the same mistakes I did. I've wasted well more than I want to even disclose here on ideas and businesses that weren't scalable. So please learn from my mistakes. It's yeah, got to be scalable. A, it's got to be something you could do online. Yeah, that's a playing not to lose uh, tactic when you exchange time for money. Kevin, you're, you're exactly in the waiting right. area. I'm going to get to you in just one minute. I just want to top up on this. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the, the thing about coming up with a business idea. So... <laughs> Let's put it this way. So like you're world class at what you do, you know, with your clinic, you figured it out, you've got customers, and then you identified three, three problems. I think you said they were embarrassment, uh, cost, affordability and accessibility, accessibility, right? Um, similar sort of thing with what I did with my debt business, right? Like I saw working in the credit and collection space that there was a lot of people with credit card debt. The, the agencies would liquidate a very small percentage of that into payment to the creditors and the rest of it would just sit around collecting dust. And I was yeah. thinking, you know, thinking to myself, well, how do I make this more affordable by perhaps maybe, you know, reducing the balance? Because we had a strategy for that and then offering mm -hmm. it more to the masses publicly. And it's like, I had a coaching call with a guy today that wanted to start up a, a t-shirt business. You know, his um, heart was in the right place. Uh, he's got a special needs kit, had a great slogan for it, wanted to put it out uh -huh. there. Totally get what he's doing. You know, for every uh, profit dollar earned, you know, there's a certain percentage that goes to other special needs kids. But 
the apparel business is so saturated. Everybody's got t-shirts. You can, but like, I've got t-shirts below in my Teespring store. I'm wearing one of them right here, by the way. You can grab the merch here if you want. But <laughs> there's, but there's apparel businesses everywhere, right? Yeah. Um, you know, the times of things like Sean John are kind of long gone, right? Like, like they've all come down to low cost, high production, Target, uh, massive yeah. volume, you know, smaller yeah. margin factories. Um, it's very hard to compete and make a lot of money into that. So you want to try, like, I like the way that James Altucher does it. I don't know if you ever read it, any of his work. No. He's got a great book. It's called Choose Yourself. You should read it. You'd love it, dude. Choose um, Yourself. Yeah. Choose Yourself by James Altucher. And he got into the strategy of coming up with ideas by just on a notepad, jotting down ideas and kind of marrying them up a little bit. Like, yeah. The concept of my channel name, Entrepreneurs and Carbs, is really, I really like hanging out with smart entrepreneurs that are whip smart, that put a dent in the universe, that do shit, that yeah. are cool, and I yeah. like fast cars. Why yeah. not interview them and their rides, right? And that's kind of how I mashed it up and it got started with that. I'm, I'm never going to yeah. change the name because that's like the origin story. But um, mashing up different ideas can often lead you to places that not a lot of people think about going, but is brand new territory. As long as it fills the need and there's a demand for what you're doing, you're always going to know that it's the right market because you're asking about you know market and business idea because people are going to yep. want to throw money at you. Uh, mm -hmm. You're in the sexual performance business, right? Like at the end of the yes. day, and everybody, yeah. pretty much everybody, I mean, most guys still want to get laid. Uh, yes, they want to do well when they're doing it. Uh, yeah. They don't want to suck at it and they want to get no. great reviews, right? Just like anybody yeah. else or anything else. So <laughs> yeah, why would you want to repeat action? Of course. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, of course you want repeat customers and you don't want to have to go fighting <laughs> looking for it. You want them to come knocking no. down your door, right? Yes. So why not be world class at what you do? So you figured that part out and then, you know, you kind of distill it down to home device at a lower cost. So I get it, right? It's like, that's what you want to look for. Too many guys try to compete in a very busy, noisy space. T-shirt space, right. I want to do this. Everybody else is doing it. Um, I had another guy that I was coaching that's a videographer. Great guy, awesome, does wicked work. But I can go to a Facebook page right now in the Toronto area, and there's 50,000 people on that page that do yep. video work. That's $350 for a day. It's very low cost, right? So you have to find right. something new that's innovative, right? Yep, you have to be so, unique in that marketplace. I agree. Kevin, you ready to go, bud? I'm going to throw you on. Yeah, so there's a running joke. I just want to introduce you to my guest. So there's a running joke on my channel um, <laughs> because we talk a lot about how to get the girls on some of the other shows. And um, there's always this guy whose name is Kevin from sales that might take away your down. girl if you're not on your game. And today, right now, we have Kevin from sales on with us. So how you doing, Kev? That's me. What's up, buddy? What's up, dude? I've called you. What's up, Kevin? Times, Hi, how are you? Good, man. So I was actually really enjoying you, what you were talking about um, with the notepad. And uh, I've really kind of been struggling. So, Rich, I don't know if you remember, but I started a car dealership a while ago. Yeah, you were the Lambo guy, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, bad badass one g is my YouTube name. That's it, yeah. So um, I now have my car dealership going, and it's just me running it. Um, and I've had that for about a little over six months now. And mm -hmm. I'm just really struggling just getting the motivation. It's like, I can make money really easily. And then it's just mm -hmm. like, I can, I can hit my, uh, like cover my bills for my rent and my, and all my utilities really easily. And then I feel like as yeah. soon as I make that money for the month, I just like yeah. turn out because I can, yeah. I can, and I don't have to be there and I just do it by appointment only. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I just, I'm, I'm really having a hard time, like finding the motivation because I feel like I've already had the big, nice houses i've had plenty of you know all the nice cars i could want and i can already buy anything that i want and it's like yeah. money isn't hard for me but it's but i feel like i'm wasting a huge opportunity because i have i could put you know 40 50 cars on my car lot and i'm down to like five or six right now and it's, i've got money just sitting in the bank i need to be buying cars but i don't know i just can't get that motivation to just yeah. do it well people usually get like like they lose motivation when they lose interest, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it happens in relationships, it happens in businesses, it happens in friendships. Like if you're not interested in hanging out with Bob for, or Kevin from sales um, and he's busting your chops and he's an asshole and you never, you know, like he forgets his wallet all the time and he wants to borrow money all the time. At some point you're gonna be like, okay, this is like, what am I getting out of here? I'm not really digging right. this vibe sort of thing. So what is it about what you're doing that you're not liking that, that doesn't keep you motivated? I don't know. I feel like my Are brain you just telling cars you hate or 
No, I actually sold my Corvette today. Funny you okay. were talking about cars. I, I I have three Corvettes, so my my dream is to like have my garage full of Corvettes this this time next year. I currently have three. Well, other than the one I sold today, I'll be selling another one tomorrow. What do you so, think of the new Corvette, by the way? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I've been trying to get one, but I can't. Everybody's saying <laughs> they're like trying to mark up the price twenty five thousand over MSRP as well. Yeah. Wait. Wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to wait. To wait till the end of next year, probably. But I love that that car. Looks really, really nice, especially for sixty grand. Well, it's yeah for sixty grand, yeah. But for ninety grand with the markup, yeah. forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Wait, wait for the Z06 or the ZR1. But anyway, yep. so okay, so cars, Corvettes. So why are you hating it? I'm not hating it. That's the thing is, is but you're not loving find, it. I feel like it's like laziness, just like. I not, nobody like nobody's telling me you know there's no I'm just controlling myself and yeah there's no yeah you, there's accountability so check this out I'm just gonna jump in here real quick and yeah. I don't think it's uh Kevin I don't, I'm listening and man dude I gotta tell you you're just like the rest of the entrepreneurs out there you get to a certain level and it's easy to get complacent yeah. and you can go out there and you can make a bunch of money and then you can just ride you know you can ride it for a month or two and then go out and make a bunch of money so maybe it's not the money um that uh, should be the motivating factor there should it, there should be another thing pulling you in the right direction listen i found myself especially in the last probably 12 to 18 months like okay i hit a certain level and now i have a team around me right and my team does everything i used to do mm -hmm. right so i woke up this morning and i'm like getting a bunch of stuff done and then i'm all done by 9 a.m and i'm like what am i gonna do for the rest of the day yeah. So I literally come in and I ask my staff and I'm like, what do you need help with? Like, let me roll up my sleeves and jump in. Uh -huh. So I'm at a place right now, kind of where you are, where it, now it's like, okay, what do I do now? Because I don't have anybody holding me accountable, but me, yeah. right? Maybe, maybe you go and you, you hire a coach or you get somebody, anybody that will hold you accountable for your time right mm -hmm. being productive with your time because we all can slip into this these nasty habits of being you know uh, unproductive with our time but i will tell you i need somebody to hold me accountable sometimes too yeah. i've held myself accountable to myself for my entire life my entire adult working life of 25 27 years i've been the only one kicking my my ass out of bed every single day and now i'm at a point in my life where i'm having some success and i'm enjoying it but I'm also finding it hard to motivate myself, right? Luckily, I have partners and I have employees that are, you know, are pulling me in, in, in the right direction too, which it sounds like something that you might need is maybe it's a coach or a mentor or anybody to hold you accountable, even if, if it's for 30 minutes a day or an hour a week or something like that. That's what I would suggest because it sounds like you got the money part figured out. That's not a problem. It's accountability for your time and making sure you're moving forward. I'm trust me, brother. I'm in the same boat. You are right now. And okay, I let me ask you a question. Let's say yeah. I've got a magic wand and I can wave it to solve your problem. What does that look like? It lights a fire under my ass to get going and get out of my house. Like, so why don't you just watch like a Gary Vanderchuk video every morning? Because I probably like already watched. I probably yeah, I watch his stuff every day. YouTube so that's alone, not working, man. right? So that's not working then. So for, what is yeah, it's not. so? Like motivation needs to come from within. You have to have that spark, that fire, that ignition to go and do what it is that you're doing. So why aren't you sparked up about it? That's I don't like, know. I just, I feel like it's just like, I don't have like a why, like he was talking about for his family earlier. Like yeah. I don't have a family. I don't have children. I don't have anybody that depends on me. So it's just like, yeah. oh, I kind of have already everything I want. I'm not really even looking for a girlfriend. It's like, I don't even, I'm, I'm not even into that right now. I just got out of plenty of, bullshit relationships of my days i'm just like i'm yeah. good with me and my little puppy right now really it's just like good. shit i don't i don't really need to work like why am i gonna go do it if i don't really need to do it but then it's like the flip side is like i'm really i should and i i know that i can that's the thing See, is all i have at, to do is at least you there. know it's there you, you know yeah. you yeah, at least he's recognizing the fact that i should be doing something more with my time yeah, you know? yeah, I feel guilty for like every time. Exactly, I, I pull. Yeah, up, like, you oh, know, you God. should be doing something constructive, right? Yeah. So, what about how do you scale this business? Can you do this online? Can you build this business in other cities? Can you, you know, broker these deals? I don't know how you sell these cars, you know, online. I'm sure a lot of it has to do, with, but you know, can you, you know, start? Well, where are you from? Where do you, where Utah. do you work? You're Utah. in Utah. All right. Yeah. Hey, so, let me ask you this question. So, so if we go by altitude, right? Like. Uh -huh. 
a thousand feet is basically ground level. You're working in the business every day. You're the janitor. You're the guy that cleans the car. You go to the auctions, all that stuff, right? I do everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like five thousand feet, maybe you've got like somebody that works under you that that does some administrative work. When you get up to like airline or altitude, right? Like thirty-eight thousand feet cruising mm -hmm. altitude. That's when you're looking down at the entire horizon. Like I'm a top down sort of guy, right? Like whenever I do a before the train wreck with uh, Dr. Sean Smith, you know, the clinical mm -hmm. psychologist, he's more yeah. of a bottom bottom up guy. Like he'll deconstruct things from, from the basement up. Whereas I look at things from top down and that's how most entrepreneurs look. So at cruising altitude at 38,000 feet, when you're looking down at the entire landscape, what do you see? Like what's going on there? Or <laughs> are you nothing. even at 38,000 feet? <laughs> Right. Like yeah. where are you at in the altitude M might be the question that I should be asking you. I feel like I'm pretty dang low, to be honest with you, man. I just feel right. I just feel like. And that's the thing. Like when you're like when you're on an airliner on the tarmac, it yeah. needs like 100 percent throttle to get off the ground. Yeah. That's where it does all of its work. And by the time it's at thirty eight thousand feet, it's probably at like close to idle. I'm not even close to idle, but you know what I mean? Like they throttle back quite a bit. Yeah. Flaps come up. It's streamlined. They're at a good, efficient cruising speed and things are super smooth and easy. Most part, unless there's turbulence, yeah. but you get the idea, right? So, you know, the name of the game is like when you're a younger guy, um, you're on the tarmac, right? You got full passenger, full load, full full fuel. You need 100% effort to get off the ground. You, got, you have all your runway, you get off the ground. And as time goes on and you once you, you know, once you figure out the processes and systems and the shit that you like to do and you offload the stuff that you don't like, that's the other thing too. Like I find a lot of guys lose motivation if they get tied up too much doing stuff they hate, right? Mm -hmm. Like tedious tasks, one that they're not good at, and two, they hate. Anything that you're not good at and you hate, somebody else does it. Outsource yeah. it, hire somebody, contractor, whatever. Just get somebody else to do it. You want to focus on shit you love and that mm -hmm. you're good at. And that'll yeah. really get the motivation going for you. That's when you get up to cruising altitude at 38,000 feet. I yeah. think a lot, I think maybe kind of, I guess I, don't, I haven't told you this before, but I think what happened, because I've done this same exact thing. I opened the same business at the same location two years, two or three years ago. And I did kind of what you're talking about. I just went as hard as I could. And I burned out so fast, like two months. And I just, I just, boom, I just gave up. I shut down the business, moved out of state uh, with this chick. Anyway, that's a whole different thing. But um <laughs> But so, yeah, I, last time I did it, I just went so hard. That I think maybe a part of me knows that like I burn out kind of easily, especially mm -hmm. now that I'm getting a little bit older. Mm -hmm. You guys probably laugh at that, but um, <laughs> you know how it goes. Every year you feel yeah. like a little bit less and drive, I feel like. But yeah, last time I did this, I just I just remember thinking this time when I started the business, I'm like, I don't want to do what I did last time. I don't want to burn myself into the ground. But it's almost like, God, that's kind of what you need it's hard to find that balance. Like you don't want to go too hard and burn out and shut down like I did last time. Right. It's like, I can't find the balance. It's either one way or the other for me. I can't. That's really important balance, balance in your life. I mean, I was fortunate enough to, you know, again, have that motivation with have raising kids yeah. and there had to be some type of balance there. But listen, if you're single and like, there's no one, you know, holding you accountable, but you, then mm -hmm. again, you know, that's tough to find balance because you could work 24 seven or you could party 24 seven, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and both are very destructive in my opinion. You have to, yeah. it's easier said than done. You have to find some type of, you know, work-life balance or it's gotta be there. You know, for me, it's going to the gym or working on my Bronco or spending time with family and, you know, doing the, going to the golf course and just, you know, finding good healthy habits to you know subscribe to reading self-help stuff like that and again it's always it's always uh, easier said than done always 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 we, i think we all kind of struggle i think most entrepreneurs kind of struggle with this dude listen to me man i if i thought that there was going to be you know extra you know income at the end of the month and there probably would be if i worked 18 hours a day instead of 12 hours a day i would probably do it you know but it is it can be very destructive it'll consume you you're no, working that's not 12 good. hours a day now? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> 12 God. hours. That could be what a short day days? sometimes, man. Sometimes, that could be, dude, at four, I'm, sometimes I'm up doing 14, 15 hours. I'm up at 4 30 in the morning replying to emails yeah. and text messages on the East Coast. Damn. You know? Dude, I, I was having a lot. I still, I've been struggling with YouTube. Like, dude, sometimes I watch six, seven, eight hours a day on YouTube. I'm like, no, dude. I'm yeah, screwed. turn it off, man. Turn it off. I mean, <laughs> no. unless you're learning something new, like honestly, turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess I need to definitely set some hard limits because the YouTube thing, yeah. I've struggled with that. It's so easy to get lost in watching. Video yeah, it content. is. It's easy to get lost in it. Go to so, the gym. You, I don't you know if you heard it before, already. but Atomic Habits by James Clear. Uh -uh. Yeah, for sure. Book? Read it. Yeah. Atomic Habits? Atomic, Atomic Habits, Habits by, by James, James Clear. Clear. Yeah, okay. it was referred to me uh, by a friend. I read that about six months ago, man. I took some good nuggets out of that. I actually printed some of them out, and they're yeah. hanging on my bathroom mirror. Yeah, maybe I need to just hire like some some cheaper person to sit there and like. I feel like if somebody's there, that way I I know that I need to get inventory, you know, to kind of force me into. I hired problem. an executive assistant about two months ago, and I'll tell you right now, my productivity has gone through the roof, and my brain is is able to focus on like what Rich said, the stuff that I know I'm good at and that I yeah. have fun at. You know, okay. so I had I, I had the assistant tackling a lot of the admin yeah. work that I used to do and hate doing. It took me weeks instead of now just a few hours she can get it done in. I the put whole, it off, put it off, put it off. The whole point of being a business owner is a lot of flexibility and good profits, right? Like the whole point of a yeah. business is to return a profit to its shareholder. If you're doing that, you need to make sure that it's also something that creates freedom. Because you're the guy taking on all the risk. If anybody has yeah, to answer a lawsuit, it. it's not the employee, it's you. It's you no, it's right? you. Somebody slips yes. and falls, you're dealing with that bullshit. Yep. Right? Yep. If somebody has yep. a bad experience with your product or get or leaves a bad review, you're dealing you're with You're the one that they call. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you're taking on all that risk as a business owner, there's got to be an ROI there for you. So offload the shit that you hate that's eating up your day yeah. and time that demotivates you, that drags you down and you're totally. like, oh, man. Get away from that. Yeah. We have Just, two, we have two outsource it or contract it. We have okay. two full time virtual assistants as well. And uh I'm telling you, they and they're really good at what they do. And they they do a lot of our editing and posting on social media. And you know, they do a lot of content management for us, you know, and, and it's it offloads so much of that workload. So, you know, a virtual assistant can do a lot, you know, and someone that, you know, is is affordable. And so yeah. Delegation was just something that I had a hard time doing, just being like a control freak, you know, my whole yeah. life. Uh, so delegating these tasks that can offload them, make you happier, can make you more productive and getting back to things that you want to do, things that you find fun or, or that make you more money. Right. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. All right, dude. Okay, cool, guys. Man. Thank you so much. Good, Good time. Right you, on, Kevin. Hey, thank Rick, you for calling you in. Go? Are you going to get that C8? Z8? The C8, uh, C8. when it comes out. Yeah, you know, I saw the review on that and I posted it, the one that Matt Farah did. Oh, uh, yeah. It looked cool, but, you know, by the time he was reflecting back on it, he didn't seem to love it as much as he did when he drove drove the car the first time. Okay. To me, like, it's got to be a Z06 or a ZR1. Yeah. Like, I got to see that. Like, then, then we can talk. Yeah. I'm not going to buy, like, the old man car that a 60-year-old guy gets because he's retired and he <laughs> just wants to live his dream. I need the fact <laughs> one. I need yeah. the one that, 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 like, paints 11s down the road. You know what I'm saying? There yeah. you go. Okay, yeah. I'll watch for your footage when you get it, then. All right, man. We'll see you later. Okay, see you guys. Later, Kevin. Thanks. All right. I got a couple questions here in the chat. And, yeah. um, guys, we probably have time for maybe one, possibly two more calls. So uh, you can call in and ask a question from the link that's already posted there. Uh, where is it? Here's one from Ed and let me scroll up here. Where'd you go? I'll just read it out if I can't find yeah, it here. Sure. Oh, wait, here it is. Edward. Uh, da, 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 what? No, I can't. That's not it. All right. I'm just going to read it out. Uh, he says, okay. so with so many businesses started and failed, how do you know when to bury the business and move on? It's hard to let go of a sinking ship that you built. That's a good question. That's a very good question. What do you think of that? You know what? I mean, like and you've had a bunch that fail too, right? That's a, yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, that's the biggest question is when do you let go? Cause it's tough to swallow your pride and I'm a very prideful person. And, uh, you know, when you sink your heart and soul and your pocketbook into a business and you watch it, you know, start going like this, there is a certain time and your gut is going to tell you when to let it go. Right. If there's no end in sight and you know, you, and it, you see it coming down the pipe, the big, the biggest and best thing you can do is let it go. Right. And when you know, you've given it, you know, everything, let it go, man. And it's just not the right time or it's not the right business. And like I said, you know, you stated, and I stated before, I mean, I've uh, two dozen businesses, you know, over the last 25 years that if I, you know, for lack of a better term, just didn't work out tanked or, you know, timing wasn't right. The market, you know, took a dump. Like it, 
it doesn't matter. It's really knowing when to throw in the towel and to move on because we all like want to, we, we want to grasp for that. Like, no, I don't want to quit, you know? And, and, and if you, you take that mentality and you're like, okay, what did I learn? What did I learn? Mm-hmm. Maybe you don't know at the time what you learned, but you figure that out, you know, years down the road. So if, think of it as a learning experience, but if it's, if it's a sinking ship, you've got to let it go. And the sooner, the better. Yeah. I've, um, I mean, I've, I, I've started out businesses that didn't go anywhere that didn't make any money. Like I, uh, like I remember when, um, I remember it was around the iPhone time, like iPod and iPhone. And I was working with this guy that was more of a creative mind. And he came up with this guy, he came up with this idea of, uh, refer me to. So we got refer me to.com. Um, mm-hmm. and we were going to start in the mortgage industry. I think you said that you worked in the mortgage industry too, right? I did for countrywide. Yeah. 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 So, um, so with my debt business, we used to, we used to try to work with mortgage agents to, to get their, uh, turn downs, settle the yeah. debt, make the deal fit, and then they would close it. Um, yeah. So I was always talking to mortgage agents, right? Like they were always uh, chatting with me. You know, we had some reciprocal stuff going, but then they were always asking for deals. So he came, you know, came with this idea, like refer me to a mortgage agent, you know, which could have gone into refer me to an insurance agent, refer me to a mortgage lender, whatever. Sure. So, um, so we created the site. We started generating leads, and without even figuring out a price point, when we tr- started to try to sell these leads to these guys, nobody yeah. wanted to partner part with their money. Not a single person wanted to buy a single damn lead. They wanted it really? on consignment. They wanted it on contingency, but they wouldn't buy the leads, right? They so wouldn't we're buy like, the leads straight up. We just flat out. We just wasted like six months designing this thing. There was no profit margins in. People were like, they were just, for lack of a better term, they were probably the yeah. worst possible client to work with. Um, so mm-hmm. what I did was I just said, shut it down, right? One, I hated yep. it. And two, it wasn't making money. So if you hate it yep. and it's not making money, shut it down. If you hate yep. it and it makes money, sell it. Exactly. Or find somebody else to run it for you. <laughs> right? You're right? exactly right. Find yeah. someone else to run it for you or sell it. You're right. Um, there's a question here about the product. Uh, AA yeah. says, and this is a good question. So I'd actually be interested in hearing this too, because I don't know if you can tell by the video camera, but I got third degree burns on both my arms and my chest. Uh-huh. Um, so th- they're not super visible. You can probably get, you know, let me just go this way because maybe it helps out. How do I go full screen solo layout? There we go. So you can see them on my arms. All right. Uh huh. Boom and boom. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, would shockwave therapy help with stuff like that? It does. But again, everybody's situation is unique. So someone with third degree burns, you know, all over their body, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to re- just regenerate, you know, the skin and the tissue and make you look, you know, 18 again. Um, we do do shockwave here um, for uh, uh, skin and, and scars. There's actually a protocol, not for this device, but a protocol for a separate device to use on the face because what happens is it forces your body to produce collagen. What does collagen do? It fills in fine lines and wrinkles and helps the tissue look nice and soft and plump and, you know, kind of rosy, you know. Um, but we have done here in the clinic, use the medical grade device on minor scarring and yes it does help improve um uh, uh or, or decrease scar tissue external scar tissue mm. so the answer is yes uh there is likely a ton of benefit to that um with this specific device again it's not designed to do that it's designed to do a few other things but shock with low intensity shockwave therapy has been used to reduce scar tissue I have a feeling specific. that that we're going to talk in a year and you're going to say, hey, I got a new device that has a dial on it. Uh, yeah. Switch it over here for your, you know, for your Johnson for sexual performance. Yeah. Put it over yeah. here if you tear a bicep and put it over here if you got burns or scars on your body that you want to break up. Call it like. Uh, or want to remove cellulite. Cellulite for women too, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. technology does exactly that. So that's in a deluxe version down the road. Um, right now we're just focusing on the rocket version one. But yeah. the technology does do all of the above. And I'll drop the link there on the screen again. So if you guys want to get the device that uh, we're talking about here, it's uh, just go to getmyrocket.com forward slash Cooper. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's obviously an affiliate link. So um, it's on a pre-sale. You're shipping. It's on a pre-sale. When in January. Yeah, we're sh- 
the product is shipping in January. Um, in exchange for that, uh, the pre-sale, we are dropping the price from $749 down to $399. So you can save yourself $350 there if you go ahead and pre-order it today. Mm -hmm. Again, I'll just kind of back this up. Um, you know, again, this isn't a technology that we've discovered or claimed to invent, and we've just made it affordable and removed the embarrassment factor for guys to use it in the privacy of their own home. It does two things. It breaks up scar tissue and, uh, and plaque, and it grows new blood vessels. So uh, there are clinical studies that you guys can, you know, search out there on your own that are unbiased and third party uh, um, um, urologist studies done over the last 25 years to prove that it's safe uh, and that it's efficacious. So um, you can pick it up at an affordable price now and do this in the privacy of your own home. Yeah, it's great. Um, I mean, I, you know, like I said, at the start of the show, I, I bought mine long before we even talked. Um, and then Jay texted me and he's like, dude, you got to talk to this guy. I'm like, yeah, I already know what it is. I already bought one. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, going is. back to this isn't just for guys that, you know, are experiencing any type of ED issue. If you just want to have better sex, this yeah. makes sex better. And who the hell doesn't, right? Who doesn't? Yeah. I mean, like the whole like the whole point, the whole reason why I went on TRT two years ago is because I wanted to feel younger. I wanted to be stronger. Yeah. I wanted to have more focus, more motivation. And that's what you get with testosterone replacement therapy. I guess yeah. you do that too, right? I mean, you're 44. You look pretty solid. I'm, I'm 44. I do TRT and I have for the last four or five years. Yeah. I mean, it's a game changer. So if game changer. like is, is, is TRT for muscles focus, um, and productivity, the same as what like list does for your Johnson. It's exactly the same thing. I tell everybody the same thing. It's like taking your, 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 your junk to the gym, right? So this is growing new tissue and it's helping to clear out any plaque or scar tissue, right? So you go, you know, you guys know this, you do curls every week, week in and week out for a year, your biceps are going to get bigger. Same thing if you're doing pushups or bench press, you're growing new tissue because you're causing micro trauma to that area. This does exactly the same thing. So this causes micro trauma to that area, pushes blood flow there for the purposes of regenerating blood flow and blood vessels. All right. On that note, let's um, let's wrap up this broadcast. It's been a great one, yeah. man. I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, uh, man. Thanks for having me on. Me Anytime. This yeah, it's been great. Um, I'm going to put the link in here in the chat as well. Um, what are your closing thoughts for guys that want to play to win in life versus playing not to lose? You know, guys, it, it uh, there's without any uh, any risk, there's no reward. My buddy uh, puts it as, uh, you listen, there, it's like coal, right? There's no pressure, there's no diamonds. Yeah, and no don't be afraid to fail, man. I'm gonna tell you, for I, it took me three years to 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 get a bank to lend me just a little bit of money, and every morning I was up at my computer like four o'clock in the morning. I was working two jobs, right? I would get up and I would drive an Uber at four o'clock in the morning, right? to put food on the table. And then at 10, I would go do my normal day job, right? Which was consulting around LA for digital uh, agencies. And I hated it, but I did what I had to, to put food on the table, right? And it gave me time in between rides to, you know, stop into a bank and apply here and do this and do that. But with no pressure, there's no diamonds, guys. You cannot be afraid to fail. Go watch Arnold Schwarzenegger's video on, on, on failure. I love and, that video. and it's out there. I love that video and I watch it. I still watch it. To this day, probably once, once or once every week or two, I still watch it. He's like, he literally says, you cannot be afraid to fail. Ban the rules. Don't break the law, but don't be afraid to fail. You have to fail to learn. So that's the biggest nugget, you know, I, I'd like to leave your, your audience with. And I know most of them have heard it before, but I'm living proof, man. I've failed two dozen times in businesses and I've worked my ass off to get where I'm at right now. And, you know, we're, we're pushing these, uh, this, this industry and this technology uh, into something that it's into somewhere it's never been before and it's paying off in huge dividends. So you guys, you can't be afraid to fail, man. You got to get out there and just put yourself out there and you're going to get kicked in the nuts and get up and do it again. Like I say, guys, do the work. Do the work. Do the work. Um, thanks, man. Really appreciate you joining me. Looking forward yeah, to was, uh, this the product when it arrives great, in January. Uh, great show, and thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thank you. You know, you know, hope we can chat again in the uh, future. So, oh, we will. Guys, give it a thumbs up. If you have a uh, suggestion for a future guest, put it in the comments below. Uh, I got a lineup of about another three or four more in my pipeline. We do this every other Thursday now. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, the show is playing to win. We're not talking about playing not to lose. We're talking about playing to win on the show. So mm -hmm. let me know if there's a, a topic you guys want to hit on. We're always going to take call-ins. Again, dude, thanks for joining me, man. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate it, buddy. Thanks. All right, take care.